Hey there, everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. And guess what? Oh, three more videos. That's right. Today's and two more. And then we are done with Latin for the year. And we can say that you have learned so, so much and you have done a great job. So you should really be proud of yourself. So, but we're not done yet. This chapter is not easy, as you guys are seeing, and there's a lot to learn on this chapter. So, um, we need to pull our bootstraps up and keep working um, to finish strong, okay? Finish strong. All right, let me give you an idea of what today's lesson is going to look like um, so that um, everybody knows. Uh, we're going to start with a question from this week and then we'll go into your quiz time and kind of talk about that for a minute move into review like we usually do so reviewing kind of some stuff from last week and then we're going to look at those five objectives again so the new ones for this week um, so those five objectives that we have for this chapter that we may have to make sure that we really 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 know okay um, so we'll go into that and then we'll finish with um, looking at the at least the first portion of the reading of section three. And then the final thing that I'm gonna go into is I have looked ahead for you for the rest of the chapter in chapter 12. And I am going to spend a little time at the end translating some really difficult, really long um, sentences that are in the rest of the chapter. So you can come back to that if you want at that point. Um, or if you get into your, um, I'll tell you which lines those are before we even start that way. If you know that there's a line in there that you're really struggling with as you're going, you can always just click back onto this video at the end and um, look at those translations uh, with me. So, all right, without further ado, the first question was one that I, was thinking you guys would be asking about. Um, so uh, that is about the diff these verbs imperat and paret. So imperare and parere. So we're gonna get to those as we get into our reading um, today. But the other question that came up um, is a very challenging sentence in your in your text, and you can see that. I definitely had this one marked as well. So, um, so I'm glad you guys are asking about these things because they're not easy. So I have written this sentence, yes, sentence up on the board and we're gonna just kind of work through it a little bit. Um, we'll take a few minutes to do that and then we'll move into our quiz. Okay, so if we're looking at this sentence, the first thing that we'd want to do in Latin, which you've already read it, right? You've already worked on it. But if let's say I'd never seen this sentence before. The first thing I would want to do is obviously read it in Latin. And I would just kind of want the words to kind of soak in. I would kind of want to get this, I just an idea of what's going on in the Latin before I try to pick it all apart, okay? So, Take a minute and go on ahead and read through this, uh, or we'll take a minute and read through this. Pedes qui pedibus it multaque alia arama fert. Gladium longum atque gravem fere non potest. Itaque gladius eus brevis et levis est. Brevior et levior quam is qui ab itaque. Uh, sorry, equite fair tour. Blech. I kind of messed up there at the end. That's okay. All right. So as I'm sitting there and as I'm reading, hopefully some things kind of soaked in. Okay. We know we're talking about foot soldiers, something about by feet and arms that they carry and something about a long sword and heavy and able to carry. We see these different things, light and uh, short and light, shorter and lighter. We're just kind of getting this idea of what's going on. Okay, so then the next thing we want to do is look for things like clauses 
and look for things like prepositional phrases that we can just take out, okay? And that way we can find, oh, squeaky. That way we can find the main part of the sentence. So I already see that I have a relative clause here, okay? And if I just want to even look at the first sentence, that would make sense because remember when we have a semicolon, what we're doing is we're joining two complete sentences together. So let's just do that. Let's just look at the first sentence, okay? And not even think about this part yet. So when we do that and we take that away, suddenly we see, oh, we have our subject. So the next step would be to find our subject and our verb. We have our verb here, and then we have an infinitive, okay, with that potest. So this is not too hard if we're just looking for the main part of this sentence. We would say foot soldiers, and we take that part out, are not able to carry a long and heavy gladium sword. Foot soldiers are not able to carry a long and heavy sword. Okay, so now let's put this relative clause in here. We know this is telling us more about this. Foot soldiers who, now here's our verb in here, so here's our subject. Remember, because clauses have to have a subject and verb. Okay, and then we have another verb. So we know that it's going to tell us two things about the subject, okay? So foot soldiers who go and who carry. So that's the main part. So who go, this is an ablative, by foot. In English we would say by foot, but this is by feet, right? By feet, by walking in other words. And who carry. Right? So, who go by foot and carry many other weapons. So, both of these are adjectives pointing to this direct object. Okay? All right, so we've got the whole first part. It looks so complicated, but it's really not. So, foot soldiers who go by foot and carry many other weapons are not able to carry a long and heavy sword. So now we look at the next sentence, okay? So in this one, we can see right away that we have a relative clause. So we can take that out and you can mark these things in your book, okay? So just take it out, it'll make it easier, all right? Now I'm gonna look for my subject and my verb. So I don't have any prepositional phrases, so I'm not going to take that out. Here's my subject. Here's my verb. There are no other verbs in here. All right. So let's just look at this main sentence. And so his sword, now this is aeus because, remember, it's not the subject's own because this is the subject, okay? Because, or, and so his sword is short and light. Remember, these are those new third, de, um, third, yeah, third declension adjectives that we like to call them. This is just a masculine, singular, nominative, both of them are, because they're both pointing back and modifying gladius, okay? So, and so, the sword, his sword is short and light. Now we have this new thing that you just got introduced to, um, this Eeyore, okay? So maybe put a box around both of these anytime you see this ending now. This is your nominative, sorry, that looks more like mom than nominative. <laughs> nominative, masculine, singular. So we know this is, just by looking at the ending, this is probably gonna tell us about the sword, which it is, okay? Shorter, remember this is the comparative adjective, and we're gonna get into this in a little bit, really detailed on this. For now, you already know that it means er, it's a comparative, right? The, sh the sword, so this is talking about the short, shorter, shorter, sorry, and lighter than, now this is kind of weird. Okay, this, we have learned it as the, remember, is, ea, id, eom, eom, id, eis, 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 that whole chart, right? And we've learned this primarily as he, 
okay, or it. This would be more um, it, okay, so sh uh, shorter and lighter than. Now the other thing that this, these are what we call wimpy pronouns. That whole chart is kind of a wimpy pronoun because they can, a lot of times in Latin you're gonna find this, they're gonna kind of, um, become more they're wimpy they don't they don't just hold strongly to what they mean like our verbs do or something um they can take on like a demonstrative uh would like the ele ela alud or the hic hike hoke okay so that's what this one's doing so shorter and lighter than that like that one that sword okay again this is in the nominative singular masculine okay then that and then this is telling us more about this which is being carried oh we did have a prepositional phrase by a cavalryman or the a horse horseman a horse soldier okay so i hope you've got this so we've got um from here and so his sword is short and light shorter and lighter than that which is being carried by the horseman. All right, so that was a very difficult sentence and this is the kind of thing I'm gonna do at the end because there are several of them that are very complicated like this, okay, that are very long. So um, let me go ahead and erase this and tell you that you're gonna be doing your quiz um, so if you haven't printed that out, you need to pause and want to do that quiz and make sure on all 10 of the vocabulary that you give me all the parts that are being asked for. So remember if it says P and G, that means plural and gender and the definition. And then if you've got a verb, um, look for anything that it's asking for. Like I know number 10 is asking you to give me the, the plural and it's asking you to give me the infinitive for that word. It's an irregular word. And then you also need to put the definition. So make sure that on each one, you always give the definition, okay? All right, so go on ahead and um, you can pause and do that and you have to put in those third declension adjective endings. All right. Okay, well, hopefully your quiz went well. If it did not go well, don't stress about it, okay? Uh, that's okay. This is why I'm kind of pushing you on those quizzes to kind of help you move along, okay? So that you don't get just overwhelmed by the time you get to your test, okay? So... Remember that next week's quiz is gonna cover your fourth, um, fourth declension noun endings, which we're gonna to cover today, and your comparative adjective endings, okay? All right, so we're gonna jump into a little bit of review. What I'd like you to do is you need a couple of things out in front of you today. You're gonna to need your, your um, textbook. You also need your workbook with your um, vocabulary, which actually I didn't get mine out. Let me grab it. Um, and then the last thing that you need is, um, I, I reattached the same things that I sent last week. So you probably printed them already, but you need three different sheets out, okay? You're gonna need your fourth declension, oh, there we go, your fourth declension nouns, you're gonna need this cute one with our, where we're learning about the comparative adjectives. That's the second one. And then the third one that you need is this one on, um, that goes into more detail with your charts and your examples on comparative adjectives. Okay, so you need all three of those out in front of you today as well. So take the time, go on ahead and get everything ready um, to go. All right. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna jump into a little bit of review. There's, like I said, this is not an easy chapter. There are five main things that you have to make sure that you really, really, really know, 
okay, in order to, to pass this chapter. But also, remember, this is a building block. So if we were to build a, a pyramid, okay, this is Latin 1, this is Latin 1 half, and this is Latin 2 half, okay, Latin 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, so we've got to build that really good foundation for you. And this stuff that we're talking about, you're going to see over and over and over again throughout your Latin career. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to do is open your textbook up, and I want you to take a quick look at line 17. Okay, line 17 says, Amelii unus frater est. So, I mealy I is in what case? Make sure you tell your mom. It is in the dative. Do you remember what kind of dative this is? This is a dative of possession, right? Two Aemilia is one brother. That's how we want to translate it. Now, the better in English would be Aemilia has one brother. But for now, remember how when we first learn something, we kind of want to learn it with some of those extras to help us really remember what it's actually doing in Latin. Okay, so to Emilia is one brother, or Emilia has one brother. Now look at the next sentence. Fratri Emilius nomen est. And we'll just stop there. Now if you notice, fratri is also in what case? Dative. It's another dative of possession. Okay, so to the brother I'm, is the name Aemilius. So the brother has the name Aemilius. All right, so that's the first objective, just as way, by way of review. That's the first thing. The other thing is something um, that you came across in section two. If you look at line, let's see, line 47. <clears throat> The sentence starts with pilum, okay? Pilum amilii, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> sorry. So pilum amilii sex pedes longum est. Now, if you take a look at that, this is our second thing that we have to make sure that we understand, okay? These are two, the first two things we have to make sure we understand are special case uses. The first one was dative, a new special way to use a dative. And then this one is a special way to use an accusative. <clears throat> so when we're trying to tell how long something is, the length of space that it would take up, so like, um, or time, you'll see more of these as we go along. But this here is an accusative, what's called an accusative length of time or space. Okay, that's its fancy name. But basically, if you can remember this one, it says the pilum of Aemilia, so the spear of Aemilius, sorry, not, not Aemilia, um, <clears throat> is six feet long. Six feet long. So when we want to express that something is like the gladius is two feet long, we would want to use the two feet part in the accusative. And you're going to see this in your exercises. Okay, actually, that's the next example. Line 50, Julius, gladius Emilii duos pedes longus est. So here we have the sword of Emilius is two feet long. Now, I want you to notice as well that longum in the first sentence versus longus in the second sentence. Longum is modifying in that first sentence what word? It's modifying pilum, okay? So that one is not in the accusative, okay? Six feet is in the accusative plural here because we're talking about more than one foot. But longum is modifying the word pilum. Okay, and then so and you can see that this is this is also the case in line 50. The sword is long, longus. How long is it? It's two feet long. So the the longest part is modifying sword. So that's not the part you put into the accusative, it's just the literally how long is it? Six feet or two feet. Duos pedes, sex pedes. All right. 
So that's our first two objectives. Our third one was our third declension adjectives, which you just went over in your quiz, right? So um, just by way of chanting it, because we need to chant these things a million times, Okay, let's go ahead and chant our third declension adjectives and try not to look at your quiz or at anything. Just try to chant them with me. So we'll do the masculine feminine okay, first. So remember they come to us as bre wis bre we, right? In our, on our um, vocabulary sheets. Let's go ahead and chant it. Is, ace, em, ace, is, eum, e, ibis, e, ibis. Remember we call them adjectives because they like to keep their eyes. Okay, and the neuter, which is what we saw, bre wis, bre we, e is the neuter part. So, e, ia, e, ia, is, eum, e, ibis, e, ibis. Good, hopefully you have got that down and that makes sense to you. All right, if not, please feel free to reach out. I can even Zoom call or FaceTime or whatever. I'm happy to, I'm really happy to help. I know it's really hard to do this at the end of the year. So um, please let me know how I can help. Okay, so you need to have out your fourth declension nouns, okay? And we're gonna go through this together. Okay, now just like um, any other time that we've had these sheets, we kind of work through the guidelines of these nouns or adjectives or whatever it is first. So let's start there. So nouns come to us in a particular, you should be able to fill this in, we've been saying it every time, a particular declension, i.e. a family. And they decline according to their own declension, right? Just like you've met first and seconds, You've met thirds, and now you're meeting fourths. Remember, there are five declensions of nouns in Latin. You've met all the adjectives, though, so that's great. Okay, um, second point there. Nouns come to us with a blank and decline according to their blank. Remember, this is the part that's different than the way that we do it in English, okay? Nouns come to us with a gender. They're either masculine, feminine, or, or neuter. And we have to learn those genders. Well, I'm gonna tell you that just like first, seconds, uh, first and seconds were pretty easy, right? If it ended in us, then you knew it was masculine. If it ended in an ah, you knew it was feminine. If it ended in um, you knew it was neuter. Where thirds were tricky, remember the whole Avon rule and everything else? Fourths are much more simple. Usually they are, point number three, they are masculine. Okay, so you should have written on number two, nouns come to us with a gender and they decline according to their own gender, okay? And the point number three, fourth declension nouns are typically masculine. However, last chapter, remember in the body chapter how I was saying how we drew the picture of the body and everything and the dude didn't have hands, right? we learned that hand was really different and it was something that was on your quiz where it was manus and then remember the plural had to be manus and this was a really important so important that we like you know can practically make it huge <laughs> um this was our exception this is a, is a feminine most fourth declension nouns are masculine. Now, I don't really, I, I've had a really hard time when I was first learning, remembering which declensions were which. But when I thought back to my second declension, I knew my second declensions were masculine. And my other even number, fourths, are masculine. The odd numbers, one and five, you can't really count threes, one and fives are feminine. I don't know if that helps you, but for some reason it helps me. Okay, so let's take a look at this chart, okay? Our chart for our fourth declension nouns has a lot of U's. Us, us, um, us. Okay, look, we've got two uses here. Another us, u um, ui, 
ibis, ooh, ibis. Okay, so these are our fourths. Now, I want you to notice, this is a required make run, this is a required make run, this is a required make run, okay? Um, the reason these are required is because, look, you need to know the difference when, uh, when they're not between this one and these, okay? So this is something you're gonna have to have memorized. You should be working on this every day. Okay, all of these charts, the third declension adjectives, this one, and the next one we're going to do. Okay, so let's chant it. Us, us, um, us, us, um, ui, ibis, u, ibis. Again, us, us, um, us, us, um, ui, ibis, u, ibis. And try to do it on your own. Us, us, um, us, us, um, ui, ibis, u, ibis. All right, so these are our fourth declension nouns. All right, make sure that all of these sheets that I'm giving you, make sure, sure, sure they go in your grammar folder. Please don't lose them. Put them in that grammar folder. Okay, so hole punch them, and that one needs to go right behind the third declension nouns in your noun section. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna take a look at our comparative adjectives. Now, I thought this was kind of fun. You know, we've kind of had this theme of adjectives when we were first learning them that they were like chameleons, right? And so I thought it would be just kind of fun to look at um, chameleons some more because we're still talking about adjectives. So here we have, I want to explain a little bit of vocabulary to you if you don't know this already. We have what's called positive, comparative, and superlative adjectives in English and in Latin. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble turning it correctly. So our positive is just our regular adjectives that come to us, okay? So it's words like long, okay? When, and it's just talking about one item, okay? When you're comparing to, do you see the number two there? When you're comparing to, you use the word er, right? Or you use the ending er, so longer, shorter, taller, fairer, prettier, whatever, okay? We can also use the word more. If we were using like beautiful, we wouldn't say beautifuler, right? It's not right in English. We would say more beautiful. So you can also have the word more there. The superlative, which we're not going to get to this chapter. We'll be learning that in another chapter, so next year, um, is the idea of when you're comparing three or more, okay? So the longest hair, Rapunzel has the longest hair, right? Or the 10 foot man was the tallest in the world, something like that, okay? So that is when you're, it's superlative, it's the, it's the most, right? Oh yeah, most, you can use most too. So when we're using beautiful again or something like that, we would say beautiful, more beautiful, most beautiful. The girl is beautiful, that girl is more beautiful, and that one is the most beautiful of all. Okay, so but we're just focusing on comparatives this chapter. So take a look at your little chameleons there, okay? So you have a male, a little boy, a boy a chameleon, which will get up to about 24 inches long um, in their average length versus the girl chameleon, which only gets to about 18 inches long. You also notice that the boy chameleon is bigger just in general. They're heavier, okay, versus the girl chameleon. So you didn't know this was a little science lesson, did you? <laughs> okay, so let's look at how we would put those things in Latin. So the boy chameleon, if you read below, the boy chameleon grows to be longer than the girl chameleon. So if you notice, we have to put in that little word than when we're comparing two things, okay? That girl is more beautiful than this one, you know, whatever. We're using the word than, okay? So we have puer, long, and then we have to put in an ending there, est blank puella. So we know long, if we're gonna make it comparative, 
we're just going to use longior. Okay, we're going to use this eor, and we're going to get into how to work, use it exactly, but this is just the nominative singular, okay? Puer longior, so that first blank should be eor, I-O-R. Est quam puella, so the boy chameleon, the boy is longer than the girl. Okay, if we look at the next example, the boy chameleon is heavier than the girl chameleon. So puer grab, what ending are we going to put there? Ior, I-O-R, grawior est blank puella. What did we put for than? Quam. Okay, so you should have puer grawior est quam puella. All right, so let's look at these in a little more detail, okay, because it's not, it's not quite that simple because we have to look at um, adjectives, remember, are chameleons, and they're going to modify that noun in their case, number, and gender. Well, when you're comparing, you're also going to be doing the same things. So there are endings that you have to learn with this. Okay, I'm going to go on ahead and erase this one to give myself plenty of room. Okay, so now you need this sheet out, okay? All right, so we have at the top um, our little guidelines. All comparative adjectives decline according to this chart. <laughs> There's no more charts than this, all right? So whether you're using a first or second declension, and we're going to see this in the examples, whether you're using a first or second declension adjective or a third declension adjective, the endings are all going to come from this chart if you're doing a compare, comparing, okay? So, and they use either E or I O R, you can see that in point number two under the guidelines, or E S I U S, okay? Plus third declension noun endings. So, this should ring a bell. Third declension noun endings, you already know, all right? So, let's try to put these up here. So, we're going to do our masculine feminine, okay? The singular and plural, and then we'll do our neuter, okay? So we have eor over here as our nominative masculine singular. Our neuter is eus. Okay, so if it's modifying a neuter noun, which we'll show some examples in a few minutes, um, then you're going to use this eus. Okay, so let's try to make it plural. So we know this was this says according to you use third declension noun ending. So you use the eor plus third declension noun ending. So we knew it was any, ace, em, ace, is, eum, or, um, e, ibis, eh, ibis, right? So that's all we're going to do. Any, and then it was e or ace, and then you keep the e or, m, e or ace, e or is, e or, now this is going to be just um, there is no eum, okay? E or E, E or Ibis, E or E, E or Ibis. Okay? So you can see the key here is just to have that E or in there, all right, before the endings. Now, this is kind of weird. You know how I am. I just think of weird things. Sorry. But you know, like, um, you know the, I can't draw him, but you know Eeyore, the really sad donkey in Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> I always think that whenever we compare ourselves to other people, like, oh, that person is smarter, that person is prettier, that person is skinnier, that person is cooler than me or whatever, it really makes us sad, okay? Like Eeyore. Now Eeyore sounds like Eeyore. So I don't know if that helps and that may be really weird and you may say, why did you put this image in my head? And I'll say, you're welcome. But <laughs> anyways, if that helps, that might help trigger that Eeyore ending there. Okay, just in your mind, Eeyore. Oh, Eeyore's sad because 
maybe he doesn't really compare. Well, he does do a lot of comparing in, in Winnie the Pooh. But whenever we compare ourselves to people, other people, it usually doesn't help, does it? Okay. Or it's sad when we compare ourselves and we think we're better, right? Okay, I'm getting on a tangent. All right, so Eeyore, Eeyores, Eeyorem, Eeyores, Eeyris, Eeyroom, Eeyri, Eeyribis, Eeyre, Eeyribis. Okay, let's try it again. Eeyore, Eeyores, Eeyorem, Eeyores, Eeyoris, Eeyroom, Eeyri, Eeyribis, Eeyre, Eeyribis. Okay, so our neuter, so we have the neuter law, and remember before it was any, ah, any, ah, and then it looked the same as this, is, um, e, ibis, e, ibis in our third declensions. Well, this one is Eus, and then it's Eora. So we still keep that or Eor over here. Neuter law, these have to be the same, right? Eus, so this one's gonna be Eora. And then the rest look just like this. Eoris, Eorum, Eori, Eoribus, Eore, Eoribus. Okay, so you've got all of your endings here. This is not too difficult, is it? Um, it's just remembering the Eor or Eus plus your third declension noun endings. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at the practice down below. Um, do you see where it says example one? What we're gonna do is I just wanna show you how these work with first and second declension adjectives versus using third declension adjectives, okay, or adjectives. All right, so you have, in the first one, you have gladi something, you have to put an ending in there, long plus a blank and the word est. So the sword is longer than. We know it's gonna be a singular sword because of the word est, okay? So we're gonna write in the eus, right? Eus, it's a masculine. So if that is a masculine nominative singular, which one of these are we gonna use? We're gonna use this one, okay? So gladius longior est quam. Now look over, that's the first or second declension, right? Longus, ah, uh, um. What happens if you use gravis, grave, which is one of our third declension adjectives? So look across, underneath third declension adjectives, it's the same thing, it's one singular sword, so gladius. So this is a masculine nominative singular. And again, we're using gravior. So we use these whether we're doing a first or second or we're using a third declension adjective, okay? All right, let's look at example two. A hosta, that's a feminine, right? The lance is feminine. The hosta, the lance, is longer than, which one are we gonna use? Remember, this is masculine and feminine. We're gonna use eor. Look across, the hosta is what? is heavier in this case than. So again, doesn't matter, even though we're using both of these, it's going to be Eeyore. See if you can do number three. All right, you can pause it if you need a little longer. We have a P-loom. Remember P-loom, we had a masculine with gladius, a feminine with hosta, and p is our great example of a new neuter noun that you're learning this chapter which is a um, spear, okay? So the spear is longer than. So this is a neuter, so we're gonna use this one, okay? Even though, again, we're using that first or second declension adjective. All right, if you go across to the third declension adjective, the pilum is heavier than. We're still using this ending here, pilum gravius. All right, so what I want you to do is, let's take a look at number four. The gladi e, so now we're talking about more than one because we have that word sunt there. So swords are longer than blah, 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 blah. Okay, swords are longer than, so if we're having a plural nominative um, masculine, <laughs> I forgot what I said. Okay, we're going to use eores here. Okay, 
Um, so what I want you to do is finish that with your mom. See if you can understand that. I think um, those are not too hard. The, I, the whole thing is to learn that our first and second declensions and our third declension adjectives, which remember those are the only kinds that we're going to ever learn now with adjectives, when we're comparing, they only decline according to this chart. Okay? And remember, adjectives modify the nouns in case, number, and gender, so we just have to find the case, number, and gender of the noun that it's modifying. Okay, so, whew, I feel like this is a lot. So, if you need a break, take a break, and um, you even have time to kind of come to this, this next part on Monday when you uh, read some more. Um, if, if you're just dying at this point. But I'm gonna just, I feel like it's better to give you more information than, than less, even though we would probably be close to being done with our class by now. Um, I don't know how long I've been going, but it feels like forever. All right, so let's go on ahead and take a look at section three. Um, you need to have your vocabulary sheet out, and we will start at line 84, okay? So Yulia here says, quid est exercitus? Okay, so what is an army, she's asking. Now this is a new word from last section, but I want you to pay attention to how this one is going to decline, okay? You can see it in the margin. It's unus exercitus, duo exercitus. Okay, so what declension is that? That's your fourth declension. Okay, so pay attention to how it's, how it's working throughout here. So Julius answered, Exercitus est magnus numerus militum, qui contra hostem ducetur. Okay, so translate that with your mom, and then check your translation to mine. So an army is a large number of soldiers. So militum is in that genitive plural. Remember, after numerous, we have a genitive, so the large number of soldiers who, that qui is telling us about the soldiers, who are led against the enemy. <sighs> okay. Is qui exercitum ducit, dux exercitus est. Okay, so this is is. This is that is ea id. This one is meaning he, okay? So and you, the only way to figure that out is by context, okay? He who leads the army, so exercitum there, is a what? Look in your margin. Which one am we looking at? That is our accusative um, singular, right? Masculine singular there. He who leads the army is the dukes, the leader of the army. Now look at exercitus here. Which us do you think we're using? Remember there are three options here. This one is your genitive singular, okay, of the army. So go on ahead and write down in your, on your vocabulary sheet, you have dukes. That means leader or general. Ask your mom how to spell general if you're not sure. The plural here is just like you would expect. Remember how we learned the word wokes for voice? And then we said you, you had um, vocal cords. So this is, so it's wokes, wokes. This one is dukes, dukes. So D-U-C-E with a macron, S. So what declension is this? This is a third declension. Now we can start with thinking, hmm, it doesn't start with Avon, so more than likely it's a masculine, and it is, it's a masculine. We're talking about a, a male um, here, because only men were allowed in the army um, at that time. It is a male, okay, masculine, I mean. All right, let's look at the next sentence. Okay, dux imperat milites parent. So the leader orders, the soldiers parent, they obey. Now this verb looks a lot like another verb that we've learned, okay? Remember we had, 
parere, which was par it and pariunt. That's a third eye. It means to give birth to or to produce, to lay eggs, right? This is parere, so it'll be et and ent, okay? This one means to obey, to obey. And let's look at this next sentence because this one um, has threw a few people off too. So dux exercitui imperat. Exercitus duci suo, I'm putting a little emphasis there, paret, nam dux ab exercitu timetur. Okay, so if we're looking at this sentence, it says the leader orders the exercitui. What uh, case is exercitui in? Look in your margin. You should be able to figure that out, that that is the dative singular, okay? Imperat ha is one of these um, verbs that we call like a dative of special verbs. They're just special verbs that their object is going to be in the dative. There's no other real explanation to it. We can also think though, to help us remember this, is that the leader gives orders or gives an order to the army. Um, so if you if you think it think of it as give an order to or give a command to rather than just orders or commands, then you can remember that dative. Okay, the exercitus paret. Okay, so they obey or the way I like to remember it is give gives obedience to the dative. So imperat and paret are special verbs that their object is in the dative instead of the accusative, okay? So we have the leader, and I'm just gonna give it, I'm gonna translate this two ways. The leader orders the army, but I want you to, I want you to translate it as the leader gives, the, gives order, gives command to the army. The army gives obedience to their own leader, okay? Or they obey their leader, their own leader. Because the leader, or because um, the leader is feared, sorry, I wasn't trying, ooh, the leader is being feared by the army, okay? All right, et in Germania, et in Britannia, magni exercitus Romani sunt qui contra exercitus hostium pugnat. All right, and in Germany and in England or Britain are a, a large, that's kind of awkward, are large Roman armies, um, which or who fight against the armies of the enemies. Okay, for some reason as I'm looking at it, it's being weird to me. Let's see, and in Germany and in Britain are, yeah, large Roman armies who, there we go, fight against armies of the enemies. All right, milites exercituum Romanorum bona arma ferant. So the, can you figure this one out? Look at exercituum. Look in your margin. What is this? This is a genitive plural. And do you see another genitive plural? Romanorum. So the main skeletal part of this sentence is milites ferant. So the soldiers carry bona arma, good weapons. And then what do we do with exercituum? This is a genitive, right? So this is telling us more about the milites. So the soldiers of the Roman armies carry good arms, good weapons. All right, this next sentence is pretty difficult. So um, we'll work it through together. In Graecia, 
et in Gallia pauci milites Romani sunt. Nam Graeci et Galli qui eas provincias in Colant. Iam exercitibus nostris parent in exercitibus Romanis et iam Graeci et Galli multi militant. So in Greece and in Gaul, what do we have for the rest of that? Our few Roman soldiers. Because Graeci et Galli, this is just the plural for this noun. Okay, this is not um, this is not Graecia. This isn't the country. These are the people. Um, because the Greeks and the Gauls who in Colunt, those provinces, so who live in or who inhabit those provinces, and this is another example of that eos, um, where you would expect it being them. Um, here it's they're kind of they're wimpy again. Um, here they're more demonstrative, aren't they? Okay, they're they're modifying something. They're not standing on their own as a pronoun. Okay, I guess that would be a big difference there that I, that I didn't point out earlier. When you have eos and it's modifying something else, then it's going to be some sort of demonstrative. Okay, so it's it's functioning as an adjective here, not as a pronoun. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so we said uh, who inhabit those provinces already, so that's Yam, already obey our armies. They already obey our armies, so they don't have to have a bunch of armies there, right? In the Roman armies also, the Greeks and the, and many, sorry, many Greeks and many Gauls militant. This is a new word, militant. They fight, okay? This is another word for pugnant or pugnare, okay? So in militare, you can write to be a soldier or to fight. This is more specific to the military, okay? So we wouldn't want to say like Quintus and Marcus are militant. We would want to say pugnant for that one. Okay. Neque Graeci, neque Galli, hostes Romanorum sunt. So we have the neque, neque working together. Your subjects, do you see two subjects? Graeci and Galli. And then we have the, the word are. Okay, so there's our verb. So neither Greeks nor Gauls are enemies Romanorum of the Romans. Iulia, ubi habitat Aemilius. Remember they're learning about Aemilius, the uncle there? Where does Aemilius live? Iulius says, Aemilius in castris non procul affine imperii habitat. So Aemilius, so pull out your prepositional phrases there. Do you see there are several? Aemilius lives in castris. Look at, look at your picture there. Do you see that? Castris, what do you think castris means? In the camp. Now this is a really weird uh, noun. That's because it's always, always, always neuter plural even though you're going to see later on that it'll take a singular verb, okay? It's it's kind of weird, but that's okay. We like weird, right? Okay, so Aemilius lives in the camp, not far from the border. So this is specifically a military camp, by the way. So lives in the military camp, not far from the border of the empire. Milites Romani non in opido, sed in castris habitant. So Roman soldiers, not in the city, but in the camp, in the military camp, live. So they live not in the city, but in the camp, in the military camp. Nullae feminae, nulli pueri in castris habitant, nam neque feminae, neque pueri 
militare possunt. Okay, so this says no women, no boys live in the military camp, live in the camp. Um, because neither women nor boys Posant militare. So there's your complementary uh, infinitive there, or your verb in infinitive. So neither uh, women nor boys are able to be a soldier, to fight. Okay. All right. Somehow I keep losing my spot. I might have just put my finger here. Viri soli arma fere atque militare possant. So only men, now you go to possant at the end, are able, now you go to the first infinitive, fere. Only men are able, fere, to carry weapons and militare and to be a soldier. Did you get Farah right on your quiz? I hope so. Okay, that's that weird, it's a very irregular verb. Um, so hopefully you got that fert, ferunt, carry, carries, to carry, fere. Okay, castra opidum militum est. Now this is your weird sentence. I want you to put a little box around the ending on castra and right above it, P-L. Why are we writing P-L? Because it's always a neuter plural, okay? Then I want you to underline the verb, okay? Two lines underneath the verb. Do you notice that the verb is singular or plural? It's singular, okay? So your subject verb agreement here is kind of not really working the way we would expect it, okay? The best explanation that I've heard for this is that when you, when you look at a military camp, it's really a lot of camps all in one. So there, there's this idea of always being many, okay, in one. So that's the best I can do to explain this verb. But I want you to understand that um, it is always plural but its verb is singular. This isn't gonna be a big deal. You're just gonna see it and it might confuse you a little bit here and there. I don't even know if it's in one of your exercises. Um, I didn't think to look at that, but. So the military camp um, is a city of militum, of soldiers. So this is that weird militum. This is that third declension um, miles, milites, militem, milites, militis, militum. It's that genitive plural in that third declension masculine noun, okay? Circum castra, valum longum et altum est. So, what this is talking, look in your picture here, okay? Circum. You know the word circumference? That means the the like the length or the distance around a circle right the circumference that's where we get this the word circumference is this word kirkum so this is a new preposition it's not one of our nine in cum abex sine sub de pri pro Woo! yeah can you do it as fast as me in cum abex sine sub de pri pro yeah it's not one of those so this is takes the accusative so we have kirkum castra so um, if we were to decline this out, your parents have the answers for this on their sheet, so you might want to write this out too. But it goes for castras, castra, castra, castrorum, castris, castris. There is no singular, okay? So around the camp is a longum wallum, if you see in your picture, a long wall and tall wall. It's a long, tall wall. All right, so let's, we have several new words here. Kirkum, around, and what case does it take? Accusative. A wallum is a wall. Now this is specifically a defensive wall, not like the walls that you see behind me. Those walls are not defensive. I learned, this is kind of crazy. So my husband is a firefighter paramedic. He said that he can get through walls in a house, like with his 
you know, acts or whatever, he can get through them in a matter of seconds. Isn't that so crazy? And from the outside, like coming into a house, he knows how to get in through your house in a matter of minutes. Isn't that, um, that's just crazy to me. So these are not defensive walls like they would be um, in a camp, okay? So these are defensive walls. And then your last word is altus a um. So this is a second declension adjective, um, or first second declension adjective, sorry. It means, it means a couple of things. It can either mean high, like we're talking about here, or tall, which we're also talking about here. But if we're talking about like a C, it's, it can also mean deep, okay? So it's kind of tall in the opposite direction, I guess. But um, all right. Marcus, now we're only going to do one more paragraph. We're just going to go to line 110, okay? Marcus asks, Quam autum et, sorry, est walum castrorum? So how tall is the wall of the camp? Julius says, Ooh, hmm. Walum castrorum romanorum propedecum pedes altum est. Okay, you should see something here. One of your objectives is in here from this chapter. One of your main things you have to learn. So the wall of the Roman camp is nearly, propet is nearly, that's, oh, that's a new word, sorry. That is an adverb, is nearly decum pedes. So again, we see the accusative length of time and space. So it's telling us is measuring something, okay? Decem pedes is 10 feet altum, 10 feet tall. That's really tall. Quator portai per walum in castra ducunt. So four gates, portai, do you see it up there on your picture? Four gates lead through the wall into the camp in castra into the camp if it was saying in the camp it would be castris but this is lead into inter duas portas via lata lat i'm going to tell you a fun way to remember this actually lata lata est quae castra in duas partes dividit okay so here we have another prepositional phrase here Inter duas portas. This is not one of our incum sabe. I messed up. Incum abex in sube pri pro. This is one of our accusatives. So between or among, really we probably would say between. Between the two gates, via lata est is a wide road. Okay, so this is a new adjective. Latus a um wide. Let me tell you how I remember this one. Um, you could do it the academic way, which is like latitude. Latitude. Lines of latitude here are this way. <laughs> so um, anyways, so you can remember it that way, or you can remember it a really weird way. I, I'm, a, I'm all into weird, but I remember it as lat fat. Okay, so lat fat, you need, you need wide space if you're really big and fat. Okay, sorry. <sighs> End of a lesson, what can I say? All right, so between the two gates is a, is a wide road, okay, which dewidit, which divides the camp into two parts. Which um, just by way of reminder, this next week, homework um, is to really, really, really work on those charts, okay? You need to be drilling those charts every single day. So your fourth declension nouns and your comparative adjective charts and your section three vocabulary are all gonna be on next week's quiz. So you need to make sure that you have that down. So 521, that quiz, um, May 21st. All right, um, so that's it for this video. Um, however, if you would like to continue to join me, or you can come back to this later, I am um, going to splice in some videos here. I've already this is already a splice. Um, I'm going to splice in some videos 
on some of these there's only there's really four of them but there are four lines in here that are that are actually pretty difficult so i want to make sure that you can translate those um and not take up the time next week but i want you to have this right away let's start with this first one um, so again you can come back to this when you get to it or maybe you don't have any problem with it or maybe you just want to check this and take the last 10 minutes or whatever and just check your your translation okay so let's look at this this is line 117 to 119 so again the first step we do when we come to a very difficult we should do this all the time is we soak in the latin right we read the latin try to get a handle on kind of a, an idea of what's going on okay so romani hostes armatos a curere vident atque arma sumant Ali portas castrorum plaudant, ali walem ascendant. Okay, so let's just stop here and take a look first and see if we can find our subject and our verb. Okay, so we have a subject here, Romans. Okay, this is not the subject, although it could be the nominative plural, but it's not because we wouldn't say Roman enemies. Um, well, we might, but that's not what we're saying here. Okay, redent and sumant are our main verbs here. So this is the accusative, this is the direct object. All right, so Romans see, what do they see? This is our head verb. Okay, I'll just put this little guy here. Here's our infinitive. They see the, oh, sorry, this isn't the direct object. This is our accusative subject, okay? Here we have it. See? It's tricky. <laughs> you gotta work it out. Okay, so Romans see the armed enemies run up, so like run up to the camp. So they see the armed enemies run up to the camp and pick up their arms. Well, who's doing the picking up? Because we figured out that this is a head verb sentence pattern, right? Our indirect statement, we know that it's still, this is still the subject. So the Romans are doing two things. They are seeing and they're picking up. What are they seeing? They're seeing the armed enemies run up and they're picking up their arms. Now, do you remember how these two words work together? Ali, Ali some and others. So when we have two alis there, we know that they're working together like neque neque or et et, okay? So ali portas castrorum claudant. So some close, they close what? The gates of the camp. Others, ascendant, they climb the wall. All right, so that's our first one. I'm going to pause it and splice in the next one. Okay, so our second bonus sentence comes from lines 135 to 138. And again, the first thing we're going to do is read it, right? Castra et opida nostra ab hostibus o pugnantur, neque ex pugnantur, nam milites nostri, qui fortiore sunt quam hostes provincias nostras, atque patriam a germanis alisque hostibus defendant. Okay, so we should kind of have this general idea of what's going on. I don't want to give too much away, so we'll just jump into, do you see any prepositional phrases? I see a few. I see ho ab hostibus. Okay, do I see any clauses? I see a qui, a relative clause here. Okay, and it's helpful because at least now in Latin they're giving us the English um, uh, grammar so we have the two commas that set it off and then I see another one it's kind of a long one but I see another prepositional phrase okay so that kind of helps take things away and then we can add them in right so our subjects for the first part castra et opida which is what we would expect because we have an and here right in our so there's our plural and then of course it's a passive 
So this is our first verb. And another one here, the plural, passive. Okay, so let's just start there. So the castra et opida nostra. So our camp, military like camps, right? And cities are being, now this word means to attack. Okay, this is gonna be a new word for this section, so I'm not sure if you've gotten that one yet. And this means um, uh, conquer, okay? So they are being attacked um, and not being conquered or taken over or overcome, okay, by the enemies. Because our soldiers, now this is telling us more about our soldiers, who are, now what do we have here? Who are, do you notice our little Eeyore here? Remember Eeyore, right? It's sad to compare yourself. Okay, so the Eeyore, so who are stronger than the enemies. Okay, who are stronger? We're talking about the Roman, the, this is uh, Julius, I believe, talking, um, explaining. They are stronger than the enemies. Now, what else do they do? So the subject is still here talking about the, because this was the new subject here. This was joined by um, a conjunction and a, a comma there. So this is our second sentence. So here's our main subject. So our, our soldiers, if we take that out, they defend, they defend what? Our provinces and they defend the country our fatherland from what from the germans and other enemies so let's put it all together so the camp or camps and our cities are being attacked by the enemies and not being overcome or not being conquered because our soldiers, who are stronger than the enemies, defend our provinces and our country from the Germans and other enemies. Okay, let's go on to number three. So here's your third one. So it's line 150 to 152. This one is not really difficult in its construction, but some of these new endings make it feel a little bit strange. So I just want to make sure that you understand what's going on with some of these endings. Okay, so, excuse me, it would probably be helpful to have your third declension adjectives, um, like the cute little chameleon out, um, in order to get this sentence. So let's go ahead and read it first, and then we'll jump into the translation. So milites Romani bene pugnant, quod pila et orum, brevia et levia, non longa et gravia ut germanorum sunt. Okay, so if we just simply look, we have a subject and a verb. There are no prepositional phrases here um, and no relative, no relative clauses, okay? Um, we think that this might be one, but we find out that it's actually not. So, military, or sorry, Roman soldiers, pugnant bene, they fight well. Quote, this is the one that's just because, okay, because the pila et orum, so pila means spear, Right? And this is pilum pila. So let's think about that for a minute. This is a neuter. Okay. And this is in the nominative. And it's plural. Okay. Neuter, nominative, plural. So their spears, because their because their spears 
And we really could supply the word sunt here back into this part. So we're going to kind of use it twice. Are what? They're short and light. So these are just our adjectives, those endings. This is your nominative, neuter, plural. So if we're looking on here, right, mine's all typed up, but it's your nominative, neuter, plural ending that we need to use because we're looking at adjectives, okay? They are not long and heavy like of the Germans. So again, we are gonna supply a word here. Uh, we would kind of want to supply the word pila, so we're sharing it. We're sharing sunt here and we're sharing pila with this phrase, okay? Um, and when we look at this, they are not long, and again, what is this modifying? This is modifying pila, going back here, and this is also modifying pila. So why does this one not have an e and this one does? That's because, if you remember, with those neuter plurals, let's see, where's my finger? Neuter plurals in your first and second declension, it's a. For your third declension, it's an e -a. This is your longus a um, so it's a first and second, so we would only have a versus e -a for that third. Okay, so let's try to translate it again. Roman soldiers fight well because their spears, their spears are short and light, not long and heavy like those or like the spears of the Germans. Okay? All right, so there will be one more that we'll look at. Okay, so for our last sentence, this again is not super difficult in its construction, but there's a few little nuances here that we want to make sure that we understand. Okay? All right, so let's read it. Germania non solum armis defenditur, sed etiam altis montibus, magni silvis, atque latis et altis Fluminibus. Okay, so this is the last sentence in this um, chapter. And what it's saying here is, um, we look at our subject is Germany. And then our main verb, defenditor. Okay. And then we just have a bunch, have you noticed just a ton of oblatives? We have... Um, these two that are working together and then literally everything else are all these oblatives okay which kind of looks weird it's really not that tricky okay um, what I want you to do is I want you to look at these oblatives and I want you to tell me what else you're noticing about these oblatives or tell your mom so I'm noticing that all these oblatives don't have any prepositions Okay, so we actually have a lot of prepositional phrases here, but it's the no prep allowed kind. Okay, so we have armis, we have altis montibus, we have magni silvis, and we have latis et altis fluminibus. So how many is that? One, two, three, four. Prepositional phrases here, no preps allowed. What kind of prepositional phrase are we looking at? Do you remember your special case rule, the really fancy name? Oblative of means. These are all oblative of means, okay? All right, so our main skeletal part of our sentence is just Germany is defended or is being defended, okay? Or being kind of protected kind of idea, but defended. So Germany is being defended not only by weapons, OK, 
okay, or by arms, but also by altis montibus. Now we're gonna have altis twice here, and I want you to try to figure out which way we would, remember alt, altus, alta, altum could be translated high, tall, or deep. Okay, so try to figure out which one would work better with, with each noun that is modifying, okay? So by altis montibus, that's not gonna be deep mountains, right? That's tall or high mountains, either one. Tall mountains by big forests and by, remember how we remember this one, lat fat? Okay, by wide and, what did you decide? By deep, this one's deep, by wide and deep rivers. So we put it all together and it's just simply saying, Germany is defended not only by weapons, but also by tall mountains, by big uh, forests, and by wide and deep rivers. Okay. I hope that your translating goes wonderfully this week, that you work on your charts every day, and that you get outside and have some fun, uh, because that's about the only thing we can do right now, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Uh, send me questions, send me comments, send me whatever, and I would just love to hear from all of you. I hope you're doing well. Have a good week. See you next time.